This is Jason with Glitch in the System. Today we are going to talk about bug templates. So what a bug, bug template is, is just what it sounds like. It's, it's a template for when you create a bug. Uh, you're going to want to create one of these for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it's for you to make sure that you include all the information that is required for a bug. So all the details and repro steps and everything that you need in order to, to to create that bug for it to make sense. And number two, it helps with kind of standardizing the bugs that you guys are writing. So uh, you might not be the only tester on your team. So if you have a template that the team uses, then you have some standard format that you can refer to and use for your bugs. So that way, if uh, somebody else comes in and looks at your bug, they know what information they're going to expect and where to find it. So the first template we have here is a basic web application template. So you will use this for websites or web applications, anything that you're going to test with the browser. So what goes on this template is going to be title, a description. Uh, the description can be short or long depending on how much information you think is needed to make the developer or whoever is looking at this bug understand what the problem is uh, outside outside of the repro steps. The third item is the steps. So this is probably the most important part of the bug. So this is the step-by-step -step information of what you did to create that bug. So you're going to want to make this as detailed as possible so that the developer or whoever is coming after you looking at this bug knows exactly what they have to do to reproduce the issue. Next thing we have here is expected result. What should have happened? So that's what you're going to write down here. What, what was the use case? What was the acceptance criteria? Whatever was supposed to happen when you did something, when you did the steps before this, goes there. Actual result, this is going to where you're going to write down what actually happened. So you push some button and something happened that wasn't supposed to happen, that's where you write that. Uh, browser, um, this is going to be important if it's browser specific, but usually I try to uh, add this on here just in case. A lot of times you're going to have issues where you see a problem on Chrome only or on IE only or on Firefox only, and sometimes you'll see an issue where a certain version of Chrome or a certain version of IE will, will have the problem. So it's really good to include that information up front uh, just in case. Uh, bec your developer might not have the same version or might not be using the same browser that you were using to test it, so this kind of takes the guesswork out of it. Uh, last thing is if you have any versioning on your site, on your site. So if it's a web application, you're most likely going to have versioning. If it's a website, you may or may not, but you're going to want to put that on here. Uh, also, a timestamp. So if you don't have versioning, then then go with the timestamp. You could say, I tested this website at this time on this day. So they kind of know what the state of the website was at that time. All right, so that's a basic web app template. Uh, the next thing is a mobile app template. So this is going to be a native mobile app. So this is not going to be you using Safari on your iPad to uh, test test a website. This is going to be an app that's installed specifically onto your device and you're running it. So the template here is going to look very similar to the web app with a few differences. So title, description, steps, expected, and actual. So you can kind of think of that sec those five steps right there as like common uh, across any bug. Um, so we have those for the mobile app also. Uh, here, here's where it's going to be a little bit different. So instead of browser, since we're not caring about the browser, uh, you're going to want to include the mobile device. So if you're using an iPad 2, iPad Retina, whatever, uh, you're going to want to put that on there um, and the OS version of the iPad. So those are very important for mobile testing, especially if you're doing uh, Android testing. Uh, there could be like 
a million different devices that you you might be testing on and and only one of them has an issue so this is very important for for mobile um, once again versioning and time stamping uh, this should be versioning should be on any mobile app so that should be an easy thing to get and and if you need a timestamp for for something specific then throw that in there also all right and the third template that I'm gonna show you guys for the bugs is um, gonna be a basic API template um, uh, like I said the five things that are common across all of them title description steps expected result act re results those are all here so API is is pretty simple um, you don't have like the overhead of oh, what browser did you run it in and what uh, mobile device did you run it in so you don't have to worry about those things um, probably something I, I, I forgot in here um, you'll probably have some versioning on there um, you can throw the timestamp so I did forget that on this bug template but uh, should be fine all right so I went ahead and created a sample uh, web app bug um, using the web app template that I made so uh, I pretended that I found a bug on the glitch in the system site and uh, and here here it goes so title so submit button is not submitting form so something short but descriptive to kind of give an idea of, of what the bug is about a uh, description form is not submitted after clicking the submit button on the contact support page so I gave a little bit more information than I had in the title but it's not too much and it's just like kind of enough to give you an idea of what is going on here so if you didn't understand what was going on from the title the description kind of gives you that oh that's that's what he was what what's going on and what what he's writing the book about so here's the steps go, go to uh, glitchitsystem.com click the contact support menu item fill in a valid email and a message click the submit button so these are pretty simple steps but the information that you provide in there is is pretty important so you notice that I didn't get too specific like I didn't say fill in the email Bob at glitchitsystem.com and this specific message because it it doesn't really matter for this case but I, I noted that it needs to be a valid email so that that way they know that just throwing garbage in there is not what I was trying to test. I was testing a valid email and what they message. So you need to kind of pay attention to the level of detail that you need to provide. You don't need to provide too much, but just enough for them to to kind of get get going and and start working on the bug. All right, so expected result. Form should be submitted support email should be generated page should display confirmation message that message was sent so this expected result was not a single output it wasn't a single thing that was supposed to happen so for example more a simple thing could have been like oh I was I clicked on the radio button and there should have been a checkbox or or I click let me take that back I clicked on the checkbox and a check mark appeared so that would have been a simple simple expected result you clicked something, a checkbox check appeared. In my case, multiple things were supposed to happen. So when you submit a contact form, the form should be submitted. It should send an email somewhere, and it should s display some sort of confirmation message that your message was was sent. So it's important to list out all these things if if they're relevant to what you're doing. So obviously, all these things are relevant to what I was testing. So that's why I put them all in actual result form is not submitted confirmation is not message is not displayed email to support is not generated so basically I took what was in the expected result and I kind of mirrored that on the actual result and I said which part of this this test failed so basically I said the whole test failed all three parts of the expected result did not did not uh, function so it could have been a case where two out of the three things work so uh, maybe email to support is generated but no confirmation message was displayed so that might have been the result but in this case all three things failed so it's important to mention that all three things are an issue on on the bug all right uh, browser 
Uh, I tested on Chrome 10.1 uh, version, so I put some version number on there, so version 3.573, and I threw a timestamp on there just in case it's relevant. Doesn't hurt. So the bug templates I showed you today are a good starting point, but a lot of times bugs will need some additional information. So this information is not required most of the time, but it is a lot of times makes the bug 100% more valuable by having them. So first item I have here is screenshot. I'm taking screenshots all the time for bugs. Uh, if you're doing anything with the UI, so anything with the with the web app or a mobile app, you're gonna want to take screenshots if there's some some uh, UI issue. So if you click something and it turned blue instead of turning pink, take a picture of it, uh, take a screenshot of it because that's like an easy way for the developer to see. Oh, you have the right screen, but you have the wrong color. So screenshots are super super important. Um, next thing I have on here is video playback. I try to use this as little as possible because it takes up a lot of memory and it takes time and it's just kind of like a whole process to do uh, video recordings. But if you have something really complicated, you have a really complicated workflow. So, so say you have a 16 step test where you have to do a bunch of like out of the ordinary things uh, in order to make the bug happen. Do, do a video. Um, it, it'll help uh, because even if somebody's reading through your your bug and going step by step, there's there's a good chance that they're gonna miss something. So doing a video and showing them exactly what happened, it, it doesn't hurt. So help help your developer. Do, put put a video in there if, if it's super complicated and, and, and it's and it's relevant. All right. Next thing we have here is API request and response. So this is super 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 important for for uh, all the modern apps. So m modern web apps and mo mobile apps are using APIs. So you're going to want this if there's anything weird going on with your site. So like if data is not coming back correctly or if stuff is not uh, displaying on the screen, you click a button and and nothing comes up. It might be a UI issue, but it might also be an API issue. So if there's a call generated when you click a button, you should include that API request and response into your bug. Uh, next thing, as I mentioned before, timestamps. Sometimes they're relevant, sometimes they're not, but uh, that's kind of up to you to decide, but use, use, them, use them when you need them. Uh, Next thing we have is logs. So if you have a logging system with your app, uh, and and if you can go and check those and see that uh, some logs were spin out, spit out some error logs or warning logs after you did something at a specific time, <coughs> then include those. Like more info, more information is better. That's kind of like why I said timestamps also because the timestamps could signal the developer to go look at the logs and they look at a sp specific time and they're like oh this is the time that he said he did something and I have a log entry for that specific time so include them both uh, when you need them or if you have them all right uh, last thing is SQL scripts if you have to do anything that needs a SQL script um, to find some users or data or whatever, uh, throw it in there. Help, like I said, help your help your developers. Like the developers are working with you, give them as much information as as you think they would need. Um, if they don't need it, they can just ignore it. But um, it's not just for the, for the developers because you have to come back and test this thing after they fix it, right? So put as much information as you think the developer would need and also put as much information as you think you would need in order to retest it or somebody else would need to retest your bug. All right, that's it.